Hi, I'm Wade from Confluent. One of the powerful features of Flink is its ability to create branch points in the data stream. In this video, we'll explore the branching functionality provided by Flink and situations where it might be useful. We've been comparing our data streams to plumbing systems to better understand how they work. If you break down a modern plumbing system, you'll see that there are often many branches in the pipes. The incoming pipes might have branches for a variety of needs, including sinks, washing machines, sprinklers, and more. Here, we are picturing a fan-out branch. Essentially, a single pipe fans out to multiple pipes. However, fan-in branches, where multiple pipes join into a single one, are less obvious because they tend to exist upstream where the average person won't see them. For example, a local water supply might have a treatment plant that draws water from the river. After treatment, some of it will be sent downstream for immediate use, but some of the water might be sent to a reservoir to be available during peak usage or other scenarios. This means we now have two possible water sources, the treatment plant and the reservoir. In order to draw water from both sources, we need to introduce a fan-in style branch, where two pipelines are merged into one. Data streams have similar needs for both fan-in and fan-out branches. For example, you may want to take data from both a Kafka topic and a database and pipe it through the same stream. Or you might want to take data from multiple topics or multiple databases. You also might want to send that data to multiple locations. It's fairly common to send some data to a database for long-term storage, but also to a Kafka topic for immediate downstream consumption. Each of these use cases requires us to create a branch in our stream. So how do we create branches? Let's start by considering fan-in branches. There are a variety of ways that you can create these, but perhaps the simplest is a union. A union requires two streams that each contain the same data type. The union function will take the first stream and merge it with the second. The result is a new stream that takes records from the original two, interleaving them where necessary. This type of operation can be useful when you are drawing similar data from multiple locations. As an example, pulling telemetry data from Internet of Things devices might warrant a union. Each device could emit the same type of data, and we need to collect that data and unify it into a single stream. However, what if we have two streams with different data types that we need to merge into one? One option is to leverage the connect operator to create connected streams. It will merge our two streams into one while maintaining their separate data types. It will then convert those two data types into a single unified type. This is done with the process operation. When working with a normal stream, process operates on a process function. With connected streams, it becomes a coprocess function. The difference is that a coprocess function has two process element methods, one for each of the connected streams. These methods will each take one of the inputs and convert them to a single output. Recall that the process operator can be simplified with functions such as map and flat map. The same is true of the coprocess function. It can be simplified using a comap function or a coflat map function. Each of these has two methods for handling the input types. On the surface, it might seem like union and connect can both be used to solve the same problem. The primary difference is whether you map the data to a new type before the operator or after. Technically, that's true. However, their intended use cases are actually quite different. For simple stateless operations, it's better to perform conversions to a unified type using techniques like map and then applying a union. Techniques such as coprocess are typically used in more complex operations where the state must be maintained between the two streams while doing the conversion. For example, implementing a join from two data streams into a single object would require something like a coprocess. We'll cover stateful operations in more detail a little later in the course. In the meantime, what about fan out branches? How can they be implemented? Often, when we write streaming code in Flink, we chain together our operations like this. However, that's not strictly necessary. We can also write each step as an independent statement. When we do that, it opens up possibilities because now we can take earlier steps and apply different transformations to them, creating new branch points along the way. 
We can eventually funnel those branches into multiple syncs, or even merge them back into a single stream if necessary. This is powerful and allows us to create complex data flows. An alternative approach to splitting a stream is to use a side output. This requires access to the context object found inside of a process function or similar. To use a side output, we need a way to uniquely identify it. We do this using an output tag. Output tags consist of a type that represents the data contained in the side output and an ID which uniquely identifies it. These tags must be defined as anonymous inner classes so that Flink can use them to derive important type information. We use the output method defined in the context to create a side output. It takes the output tag that we defined previously, along with the message that we want to send. We call getSideOutput on a stream operator to retrieve any side outputs it produces. It takes the output tag to identify which output we are interested in, in case there's more than one. This function is not available on all stream types. The base data stream does not include it. You'll need something like a data stream source or a single output stream operator to access this function. The branches we've covered here aren't the only ones. Others become available when you introduce windowing into your stream. This is a topic we haven't covered yet, so we'll have to wait a bit before introducing those other branch types. In the meantime, we can practice using some of these branches in an exercise. If you aren't already on Confluent Developer, head there now using the link in the video description to access the rest of this course and its hands-on exercises. Mm -hmm.